rolling. Okay, so we've got a pit bull spay, which is kind of a medium large dog. Um, I find them to be one of the easier spays because things are really easy to reach in them. We've got a sterile drape on her. I want to find my umbilicus and again we're going to do two fingers from the umbilicus. Make our incision. I'm going to clean off her linea. Get some of that fat out of the way. So we've got our linea nice and clean, we're going to pull up, make our incision into the body wall, and use our spay hook to pull up our uterus. Our uterus, and we've got some extra momentum, so we're gonna go ahead and put that away. Don't need that. And our ovary. Using a modified three clamp technique, we're gonna put one clamp on the proper ligament, break down our suspensory. And then we're going to put two clamps on our suspensory. I'm using 2 watt for this dog. She's about, I don't know, 50 pounds or so. Place the modified millers on our crush. Nice and snug. got the entire thing, which we do. Break down our broad ligament. I want to make sure that I see my uterine artery. I do not want to cut that. And then the rest can go. Check our pedicle for bleeding. You look good. I'm moving on to the next side. See how you got your bifurcation already popping out. I don't know if you have seen our Great Dane Spay, but that was a little bit more difficult to get. And here's our other ovary. So, like I said, the um, pit bull spays tend to be one of the easier big dog spays. I don't know if you could hear that, but that one made a nice popping sound. It's pretty satisfying. Got our modified three clamp technique and then we're going to put our modified millers again on that crush.
this ovary. Make sure the whole thing's there. Find our uterine artery. Leaving that intact, remove the rest of the broad ligament. And then check our pedicle for bleeding, which looks good. We're gonna put two clamps on our bifurcation of the uterus. And I don't tend to put my modified millers in the crush on the uterus, because some of these uteruses tend to be very soft. And once you put that clamp there, they like to break down. And it doesn't help putting a suture on something that's already falling apart. So the Modified Millers has a lot of crushing power in and of itself. And I find that that tends to be enough on the body of the uterus. So this all looks good, and we are good to close. Start with a simple continuous in our linea, and you really don't want to take big bites of the muscle. The muscle doesn't have any, heal any uh, holding power, and if you put that suture through the muscle, you're just going to cause more pain. Um, and it's not going to do any good. It's the the linea layer, the fibrous layer that's on top of the muscle that's got the holding power. So I'm not really going all the way through the body wall. I'm just skimming the top and grabbing that fascial layer. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... Um, Just grabbing that layer. Make sure this is nice and snug. And then for our sub Q layer. You want to bury that knot so your pattern's going to be deep to superficial, superficial to deep. And put a couple of throws on that knot. And I'm going to save this for later. And I'm going to go through and grab one side and then the middle. And then the other side, and this is going to hold everything down, help prevent seroma formation. Seromas are basically just pockets of fluid. The body likes to fill empty space with fluid, um, so you don't want any empty space in your surgery. Um, although seromas will go away on their own, they're not necessarily dangerous, they're just... Um, Owners don't like to see them, so we try to avoid them. And now we're going to go right into our intradermal pattern. is that you were saving. That way you can make a knot and everything is easy to bury. So now all we have to do is pull that knot down. 